If you've watched my channel much at all, you'll know that one of my favorite rocks is the Pudding Stone. So have you ever wondered how this rock gets its name? Well, let me tell you. The English settlers came here and they found these rocks and they thought that they looked like an English suet pudding with berries. So I've never had an English suet pudding with berries. I've had Jell-O brand pudding. I've had the instant kind. I've had the kind you cook. I've even had bread pudding, but I've never had suet pudding. So today I thought I'd try to make suet pudding and see if it actually looks like a pudding stone. Here are my ingredients. I have flour, sugar, baking powder, a little bit of salt. I'm supposed to use dried currants, uh, but we were currently out of currants, so I'm using cranberries, prunes, and cherries. And then there's my suet. I went to the butcher yesterday and I asked for suet, and he actually asked me what kind of suet. He said, would you like kidney suet? And I wasn't really sure, so it sounded sort of like a suggestion, so I just said yes. So that is the fat that surrounds a kidney of a cow, and I'm going to eat it. Uh, we have milk, the zest of a lemon, and some vanilla extract. Okay, the next thing the recipe says to do is to mix these five ingredients in a food processor. But our food processor is just this little tiny thing. So I'm going to improvise and use a bowl and a mixer. And hopefully that gets the job done. Uh, I should mention I am not a professional chef. I am just playing one today on YouTube. Now I just need to add in the other ingredients. So there's my vanilla. And we just mix it all up. Alright, at this point I have a little problem. I'm supposed to put this in a pudding mold. Uh, from the picture that I saw in the recipe on the internet, uh, that's a metal container with a lid that clamps on. And uh, I tried to find one of those at a store in town here and couldn't find anything. So, I am going to go with this Pyrex measuring cup. Uh, it's supposed to be greased, so I've already greased it. And I'm just hoping this all fits in there. Uh, this is approximately the shape that the other thing was. And that should fit fine. Alright, since I don't have a lid, I'm just going to go with tin foil on the top of it. There, good enough. You can't see down in there, but I've got some metal cookie cutters on the bottom there. The whole bottom's covered with cookie cutters. Uh, that's to keep this up off the bottom of the pot. And the boiling water is supposed to come up like halfway up this uh, pudding mold, we're calling it. Figure out how to get it in there without hurting myself. Okay, right, so that's about halfway up. I'm going to cover it. And it needs to cook for three to four hours, and I guess I can stick a, a skewer in through the top of the tin foil and see if anything sticks on it. And I lower it to a simmer, and I'll come back and check it in three hours. Well, what do you think? Um, it's not exactly the same, um, but I guess that's kind of good. Now, in its defense, a lot of pudding stones have more of a beigey, tan-colored matrix. This one's pretty gray. It is. It's got the spots. They're vaguely the right colors. I, you know, I can't say that I was super excited about this whole project. You know, the idea of fat that surrounds a organ that 
filters out waste and makes urine just doesn't sound appetizing but i guess people cook with lard and stuff and i think it's going to be delicious i'm not one of them you know what that that uh drummond island fudge store makes this really awesome pudding stone fudge that you brought home one time it is good why don't you make that <laughs> it looked right and it tasted awesome yeah, we got the big stone, stone countertop they make fudge on, yeah, so I can so just I think lay it out should, here. Yeah, so I think that be your next project, but I'm, I'm willing to try this. We'll see All how right. it goes. We, we cooked it for the full four hours. Don't know if it's completely done or not. I made this custard sauce that I think was supposed to be thicker than this, but it's custard soup, so we're just going to go with it. <laughs> I'm better at making rock stuff than this. All right, slabbing the pudding stone. It's kind of jiggly. It's kind of falling apart. I really don't know if this is done. Okay, get your plate over here. Doesn't look raw or anything. <laughs> it kind of does. <laughs> Just gonna go at that, it like this. That's the best we can hope for. Is it doesn't look raw. All right. Now at least you know when you, when you cut it, you can you know kind of see the the colors come to life a little bit more. I think. Oh. Yeah. You know. All right. Some sauce. Have some soup. Just a little. Yeah, sure. All right. Let's dig in. I'll let you go first. See if it's drop over or not. It's actually pretty good. Give it a try. Is it? You now we're eating dessert before we've had dinner. It's kind okay. Of Breaking a rule here for your fans. Can't eat your pudding before you eat meat. To quote Pink Floyd. I like it. Kind of fell apart when I cut it, but it tastes good. Yeah. Does it taste like beef fat? No. All right. It, it tastes pretty good. Yeah. Well, I think we'll wrap that up here, so uh, stay tuned and I'll show you some Pudding Stone collecting videos here.